And now I'm not in my suit. You'll have to watch the show to know why, but we're here with Chris Matthews and Tulsi Gabbard, and the first question is to you. Tulsi, should women be required to register for the military draft? I saw this. This is so interesting. The Democrats, so great at politics. I don't know why they brought it up now. Bill Maher recently had Tulsi Gabbard and Chris Matthews on his show, and they got into some of the big issues we're facing today. Tulsi totally stole the spotlight with some sharp, thoughtful answers that even left Bill Maher a bit speechless. You don't see that too often. Let's dive in and see how this conversation unfolds. I mean, men, I, I almost forgot this. Men do still have to register for the draft. We, nobody gets... I, well, this is actually something that they also just changed in uh, the legislation through the National Defense Authorization Act just a few weeks ago, is now men don't have to register because they're automatically registering them as soon as they turn 18. Okay. So you don't have to actually, you don't, have, you don't get to fill out a card or anything anymore. But for, I mean, I remember I was about to be registered I just turned 17 in yeah. 1973 when they were still drafting for Vietnam, and it was like, that was the year. It was like, oh, we're not, oh, it's like, oh, boy, did I ever luck out on that one. <laughs> but they still registered you. Now yeah. the Democrats, in an election year, have brought this up for I don't know what reason, saying, now we want women to register, because there's 250,000 women in the military right now. And if something was so catastrophic that we did have to draft people, why shouldn't women go? But why bring it up in an election year are my two questions. Uh, well, first of all, we, we shouldn't have a draft. At all? Uh, no, I don't think so. What if the it's an emergency? Well, the fact that, the fact that they're bringing this up... The fact, that, the fact that they're bringing this up now, to me, points to the fact that uh, the only reason we would need a draft is because our warmongering politicians are starting wars that they know the American people aren't going to support. When you look at what happened after the Well, they the didn't attack start on, the war. Well, when you they look didn't. at what happened... Well, you look at what happened after uh, the attack on Pearl Harbor. Thousands and thousands of people from all across the country set aside their lives and volunteered because they wanted to go and fight for freedom and security and for peace. And you look at what happened after the attack on 9-11. So many Americans like myself, we enlisted to be right. able to ensure the safety, security and freedom of the American people. And, and so when you look uh, to me, it, it's a it big red flag that they're bringing this up right now. First of all, as we have multiple wars burgeoning around the world. But as, as, a, as a you know, I've been deployed three times to different war zones. I don't want to be in a foxhole next to somebody who doesn't want to be there, first of all. That bond and that trust that exists between servicemen and women uh, who are, you know, when bullets are flying is, is so essential. You don't want to have somebody next to you who's like, hey, I don't want to be here. I don't want any part of this. That, that, that's just if you're enjoying this type of content, please give it a like and subscribe. It really helps me out a lot. All right, let's keep watching. Well, you're never... talking about life and death. I mean, I mean you're World talking War... about life and death. I know, but exactly. And if we're if, if we need that numbers of troops, I just are, uh, the, pe the people in Gen Z, they're not going to volunteer. They're, I've seen videos of them talking about. It. I'm like, no, you're right. This generation can't do it. The number of people you're going to have is is just going to be it's going to be a smaller force. I mean, compared to I mean, how many? There's a, over a billion Chinese people. If the war breaks out with them. I mean, I don't want to get uh, cataclysmic about I think this. These but... wars don't just happen out of thin air. I think that, that's my point. No, but we that... didn't start them. We didn't invade Ukraine, and we didn't attack Israel. That, that's a silly thing to say. I think, I, the Iraq, I think the Iraq war was in, was coming right out of the uh, Dick Cheney's office. That's true. Oh, that, yeah, but that war. That's true. Well, that, okay. well that's not <laughs> that Biden. Was, that, well, that's 200,000 dead people over there and uh, 4,000 of our people, and that was created by the neocons and, and Dick Cheney. Yeah. They did it. They did okay. it in the op-ed pages of our major newspapers. They started the war, and they enjoyed it. They did. What, would, what do you make of Donald Trump promising that if elected, he would secure the release of the Wall Street Journal reporter who is being tried for espionage in Russia? I mean, you know, of course he's going to say that. He, again. I will go to Moscow. Come on. I mean, it's like Ike. I, it's, it's right on the history books. Like, how's he going to do it? And who knows? He's not going to do it. Well, he could do it because Putin... Lo look... If he made it part of the Ukraine deal? Oh, yeah, a party favor? Absolutely. Yeah. Because you know what he's going to do with Ukraine. He's going to say to them, look, Putin gets a piece. What, what you that, have you keep, right? Which, honestly, might be the only way that war ever ends. How do you think that war should end? The, the war, and I've said this from the very beginning, the only way that this war ends is through some kind of a negotiated treaty. That's it. That's been true from the very beginning. Does that mean giving up our, Ukrainian life? It means, I think, both sides, like in all treaties, will end up having to surrender some portion of, of what they want in order to achieve that peace treaty. The sad thing is that, that uh, it is the Ukrainian people and their lives who are being expended the longer this war goes on, even though those who are actually paying attention know 
that this is only ever going to end at any point with that negotiated peaceful outcome. You make a strong point. Instead of forcing people into the military, wouldn't it be more effective to inspire a genuine desire to serve and defend the country? In recent years, there's definitely been a shift in how patriotism is viewed. It's almost become uncool to openly love and support America. If people feel disconnected or even critical of their own country, who's going to feel motivated to fight for it when it matters? That's where positive messaging, or even some well-placed encouragement, can make a difference. If people feel proud and connected, they're more likely to step up voluntarily. And as Tulsi Gabbard pointed out, who would want to serve alongside someone who doesn't really want to be there? It's a powerful thought. What do you all think? Donald Trump recently said that if he's back in office, he plans to bring Russia and Ukraine to the negotiating table to work out a peace deal. His approach would involve finding a compromise where both sides come away with something. So it's not about Ukraine just giving up territory, but reaching a deal that benefits both parties and, hopefully, ends the conflict. If he manages to make this happen, it would be a major breakthrough. What do you think? Share your thoughts in the comments, and if you're enjoying this content, hit subscribe. See you in the next video.